1 versus 2 in the RBS Premiership as league leaders Melrose were the visitors to Golden Acre. Heriot's bagged the first try of the game in five minutes. Max Lermonth with enough room wide left to dot down. It was a fast, furious start to the game and set the tempo for an absorbing match to come. Just a few minutes later, a forcing run by Michael Maltman gave the home side good field position. Melrose infringed, and Graham Wilson, who'd missed the earlier conversion, made no mistake from straight in front. Both sides weren't short of ball to use and it was Melrose who struck next. The visitors pressing hard and their reward came when Nick Bevan powered over. <laughs> Joe Helps converted and it was 8-7 to the hosts. Despite both sides attempting to move the ball at every opportunity, Heriots went into the half-time break, leading by a solitary point. <laughs> if Melrose were looking to overturn that Heriots advantage, the second half started badly. A spilled ball, Heriots pounced, and a straight run in for Heriots hooker, George Turner. Graham Wilson added the two points and it was 15-7. A Joe Helps penalty cut the deficit to five. But hopes of a revival were dashed. Maltman took the direct route, and when the ball was played wide, it was centre Keith Buckham who just made it to the line. Again, Melrose hit back, and they capitalised after a period of sustained pressure on the Heriot's line.
Eventually, it was Damien Hoyland who got to the line. His try and a helps conversion made it 2017. But yet again, Heriot's moved further ahead, and this time it was to be decisive. The ball moved along the line, and Keith Buchan with his second try. The final try for the home side came just before the whistle. Heriot secured their own ball, Maltman again taking the direct path close to the breakdown and Max Lermont finished off a fine Heriot's performance with a try in the corner. A fast, open game of rugby, which both teams contributed to. The result means that Melrose sit top of the RBS Premiership, two points clear of Heriot's. Gala are in third, seven points behind, but with two games in hand. Michael, uh, 30 points to the 17 win against Melrose and uh, Heriot's Championship Challenge back on the road. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, no way it was today easy, easy. Melrose, you know, we're fighting right to the end and, uh, you know, it was really good from all the boys, including the boys off the bench. Um, we had a really strong squad of 20, so, yeah, brilliant win for the lads. In terms of uh, your own contribution to it, um, how difficult is it to be playing sevens for Scotland on the Gold Coast a fortnight ago and now to be back playing fifteens for Heriots? Um, not as easy um, going into fifteens. Sort of. The main thing is trying not to blow out within the first uh, 14 minutes um, and keeping yourself going for 80. But, you know, at least with fifteens, uh, you can sort of find a couple of phases to get your, your breath back and get back into the mix. So, no, I'm really enjoying... Um, playing 15s in between, getting the, the physicality that, that we need for the Simmons as well and getting that through Premiership Rugby. So last week, Heriot's lost to, to Hoyek. Uh, this week, as I say, Championship aspirations back on the on the road with a win against Melrose. Uh, how, how do you kind of square the two results? Again, I think it's probably just a, a mentality thing. Yeah, I think in this league, pretty much any team can beat anyone. It just depends who's wanting more of the day. I think last week, you know, Hoyt showed that. Um, I think this week we, we showed that against Melrose. Um, but it just means that the next run of games that we've got are against the top top teams in the league so far, so we really need to keep up today's performance. Phil, um, how do you explain last week's result then this week's result? Uh, rugby. That is rugby, Graham. You know, um, last week last week wasn't even that bad a performance. When you go back to the, the, the video, it was OK. But we didn't take the chances like we did today and, and, and we let Hoyt get into the game and it kind of, they got more points than us. But today, every time we had looked like we were going to score, we almost did. And why that is, I don't know. But it's probably um, the input of some players. You know, we changed the team around a wee bit as well. So maybe we've just got the right combination now. Big contribution from the bench today, for example. Well, we were, we were conscious that we had, you know, Sean Kennedy, a pro, Kevin Bryce, a pro, coming off the bench, and even Jason Hill, who's been outstanding for us. So even those three alone, we knew or, and we were hopeful that it would bring something to the, off the bench, and they did. The uh, period of pressure just before half-time, uh, where you're, you're holding an 8-7 lead, uh, Jack Turley loses the ball over the line in the act of scoring. Are you a wee bit concerned at that stage? I, I was always, I'm always concerned, because every time I see uh, Melrose's results, not always, but often they come back late on and they just dig in and they, and they always go for it right to the very end. I thought 8-7 with a bit of wind advantage, is it enough? You know, we put a lot into the first half because we went in at half time, they looked pretty tired. Um, but I don't know what happened, but second half we played even better probably than the first half, even against the elements. So you're always concerned because Melrose looked like they're going to score for me a lot as well and a lot of the times that we've got the ball. So 
it was just great that we came out and sort of maintained the, sort of the, the, the first half effort into the second. Good for, for the game again today. Decent crowd at Golden Acre. Um, looks encouraging times for yourselves. I, I just think it's great, you know, and I think Melrose are a great side. And I knew that we were a good side, but to prove it to ourselves, and I knew it was going to be a pretty good game, and I thought it was a great game. You know, honestly, I thought it was a great game, and the club have got 100 odd people in for lunch, and people are coming in to watch the game. Melrose are, you know, top of the table clash. Why would you not come and see it? And, uh, and I just hope people keep coming back and watch it because they're going to see some good stuff. So, uh, a trip to the borders looming next. Um, you had a great turnaround against Gala here uh, right at the start of the season. Uh, Gala, a big win against Curry today. Thoughts about next week? It's just ma every game is massive. Great. You know, Gala, they'll be so up for it next week after what happened here, undoubtedly. Um, and you know what? We've, put, we've opened the league up again by winning today, so they'll be thinking they've got a chance. We'll be thinking we've got a chance. Ayr probably think they've got a chance. So it's just pressure week to week, to be honest. And if we can turn out with a team similar to that, with that performance, then, you know, Gala have to play well. And that's what you want.